and the recording has started. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just recreate our teapot that we created last week. So let me just open up the scene. Okay, and then we'll just go through the entire uh, process of creating this teapot. Yeah, of course, the base object that we want to create is the cylinder, and then we're going to extract out the handle. And from the handle, right, we're going to create the spout. So we'll be going through a number of tools, right, that I've explained before. So I'm going to start from brand new scene. And we'll start off with our standard uh, cylinder. Okay, I'm just going to make sure that my cylinder is the same as yours. <coughs> a cylinder with 20 subdivisions. So what I'm going to do next is just going to bring the cylinder up and uh, I'm just going to create a, tip, uh, what, a mark out of this first. So right mouse click, go to vertex, select the central vertex, holding down the control, right mouse click, control and right mouse click to go to uh, conversion mode to faces to faces so that the top faces are selected. Okay, or you can use holding down the tab key and then paint over the selected faces. So two different selection methods. So with the faces selected, you hold down to shift right mouse click and then you choose extrude face. And then we're going to change the offset so that the uh, selected faces will be smaller than the uh, diameter of this cylinder. So go to offset, click on the word offset and then slide to the right. Okay, if your amount is too sensitive, click on the pi. So it's about two values. Okay, so we've extruded one set of faces. Now we want to extrude another set of faces to pull down to form the cup. So shift right mouse click and then uh, extrude face and just pull it down. Okay, press for the wireframe to see how much you want to pull down. Okay. Okay, now next. We're going to give it a number of subdivisions on the side so that we can pull uh, the handle. So shift right mouse click, go to multi-cut. So remember, middle mouse click on the multi-cut, right? It'll cut right in the center. So I just want to middle mouse click, cut, holding down the control, middle mouse click, cut. So I can cut the even number of faces. I'm going to hold up here, middle mouse click, cut, middle mouse click, cut. All right, so I want to be pulling two faces from the... Uh, <coughs> from the side here. Okay, so remember your orientation. Make sure that you want to pull the cup right from the side. So I'm be pulling it off from the x-axis, which is which is this direction here. This is the x-axis. This is the z-axis. I already told you guys before, z is axis is the front, and then this is the side. So I'm gonna change my view by tumbling the view, alt left mouse click and then go ahead and select these two faces here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude the face out so I can connect here. So I'll be using the quick extrude. So press W to go to move, holding down the shift, and then I'm going to quick extrude one face here. Then press E to rotate, rotate slightly. Then press W again, and then holding down the shift, and then quick extrude, and pull it out a little bit more. And then I'm going to press E to rotate, rotating along the Z-axis. And then I'm just going to create two sections. So if I need additional sections, right, I can create them again. So with the two faces selected, I noticed that because I've extruded the faces from the side, you can see that there is a bend to it. Uh, so I'm, right now I'm rotating the faces so that it's facing flat to the ground. Then I'm going to press R to scale and then flatten it like that. Okay, so actually I can leave it, I can leave the faces here like this. Then I just need to identify the two faces that I want to connect to. So in this case, right, if I use bridge, right, it should work. So with the faces selected, shift right mouse click, I can use bridge faces and it should connect. So if it doesn't want to connect, you just press Q to go to selection and just reselect the faces, shift right mouse click, and then bridge the faces again, and it should work. Okay, so that once you're done bridging the faces, now remember, you can bridge face or you can delete away the faces and then using the bridge edge tool, All right? So, which is available in the modeling toolkit here. Or you can shift right mouse click and then choose bridge, the same thing, all right? 
but for bridging of it, you need to delete away the faces first. All right, so now we have our handle created. So we want to reshape the handle. So we're going to go to the front view. Okay, shift click on the marking menu, press on your space bar, left mouse click, and then change to front view, which is six o'clock. So remember, you can tap the space bar to change between perspective and four-sided view. Holding down the space bar, left mouse click on Maya and go to front view. Okay, so now we can reshape our handle. We can press number three to see what it looks like. And actually it doesn't look too bad, it's just that we want to bring this loop higher and then maybe this loop lower. So we already know that to select an edge loop, we just need to hover our cursor over edge and double click so that this loop will be selected. Press W and then just move this up. Then double click to select this loop and then bring it down here. You can also rotate it to adjust the thickness. Okay, so now we want to create another edge loop that is close to the side of this mark so that it is, doesn't web out like this. So we go to edge section mode. Okay, and then I'm going to press number two so that we can see our construction cage. Shift right mouse click, slide to multi cut, holding down the control. I want to cut one edge loop here. Oops, wrong direction. One loop here, and then manually slide until we have a loop here. So now we have a very nice looking handle. And uh, let's say if you want to extend this uh, handle out a little bit more, you can add one more edge loop here. Then press Q to select, Q to go to selection mode. Since I'm in edge mode, I can double click and select this edge loop. Press W and then just reshape this a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to try to make this look a little bit nicer. Okay, so now we have our mug. All right, so let's go to level three and then see what it looks like. Select it, press number three and Okay, some areas I need to change. I need to insert one edge loop at the bottom. Okay, to do a hard edge. So I switch over to multi cut two. Insert one edge loop at the bottom. Then on top here, remember we can use bevel instead. So instead of using insert edge loop, I'm going to use the face selection mode. Select one face, holding down the shift, double click, and then all the faces are now selected. Then I'm going to apply a bevel. You can apply a bevel on the modeling toolkit or my favorite is shift right mouse click and bevel face. <coughs> or you can press control B as a shortcut. Then I'm going to adjust the fraction and then give it maybe one more segment. Now I have a edge that is nice and smooth and uh, quite thick as well. In the bottom of the teapot, right, I want to insert one edge loop at the bottom so that this bottom doesn't look like that. So go to level one, then I'm going to select edge. Now if the edge right is continuous, you can double click right. You can see the edge loop is selected. All right, so I'm going to hold down the shift, right mouse click, and then I can choose bevel, reduce the amount, maybe give it two segments. Then if I press number three, now the bottom looks much nicer, nice and flat. Okay, what about the bottom here? Okay, I only added one edge loop here, but I want to make this bottom part look like a porcelain cup. So I'm going to go to vertex mode, select this central vertex, do a selection conversion, holding down the control, right mouse click, go to faces to faces, then extrude. And then I'm going to use offset to reduce the extrusion. I think I change it level one, then it's clearer. Reduce the amount. I'm going to repeat the extrusion again by pressing G. Then offset another section. Then push it up slightly like that. So if I go over to my object mode <coughs> and then press number three, you can see now the bottom has this nice uh, indent that looks just like a real mug. So right now my mug's handle is very thick. So I'm going to reduce the thickness. Okay, by selecting all the edge loops here. So I'm going to go to select edge loop here. Uh, I'm going to try the select similar, see whether it works. Let me see, select similar. Okay, it doesn't work. Okay, normally select similar, right, it will detect the edge loops or the number of objects that are being selected or a pattern and it will try to uh, reselect for you. But apparently that one doesn't work, so I'm going to hold on the shift, 
double click, double click, double click, double click. So while holding down the shift to add on these loops, then I can press R to scale. And since I'm aligned in the Z axis, I'm going to scale on the Z axis to bring down the thickness of the cup. Cup handle. So okay, this one looks good to me. I'm happy with this. Then my mug is done. Okay, so now I'm going to convert this mug into a teapot. <coughs> Since I want to use the mug for my tea, so I'm going to duplicate another one. So Control D, or you can hold down the Shift and grab the arrowhead to replicate this. So I'm going to uh, first create the spout for the teapot. So for the spout of the teapot, right, I'm going to choose several faces at uh, near the bottom here to pull out the spout. I'm going to split this edge loop here by inserting one more edge loop across these faces here. So hold down the shift, multi-cut, holding down the control, middle mouse click. Okay, and then you'll cut the faces evenly. Okay, make sure your orientation, right, when you're selecting your faces, that the face, faces are matching the orientation of where you want to pull. Some students accidentally choose the wrong faces and the spout ended up not aligned uh, with the handle. So I'm going to select four faces, all right, to pull out the spout. And I'm going to use the uh, circularize tool. Now, if you don't want to use the circularize tool, you can manually select the vertices and try to move them in a diamond fashion. Okay, I'm going to go to level one and I show you how you can do it by doing something called sliding the sliding the vertices. So if you go over to the uh, <coughs> vertex transform option, uh, there is this option right where you can go to transform constraint, okay, and then you can enable edge slide. Okay, with edge slide enabled, if I move the vertex right, it will slide on the edge to move the vertices right into the shape which I want. So for example, if I want to extrude to form a, uh, what do you call that, a uh, circular fashion, I have to slide the vertices right until they form sort of like a circular structure here. So that is using the transform constraint. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to undo. Of course, if you use circularize, right, that'll be much better. So I'm going to go to select these four faces. Then I'm going to use circularize, which is this shortcut over here. Or you can hold down the shift, right mouse click. And you should be able to find the circularize tool around here. Circularize the components. So we can choose circularize and you can see it has automatically moved the vertices to form a circular shape for us. Because if we subdivide this by pressing number three and extrude something out from these circularized spaces, it's going to form a circular cross section. So with these faces selected, now I can move them out. You can extrude them. So I'm going to shift right mouse to extrude, grab the arrow head, and then pull out. Now if I press number three, you'll notice that this section here will still need more subdivisions. Okay, I'm going to push it back a little bit. Then I'm going to press G again to extrude. And now you can see the section is actually round. Okay. And of course, you don't have to use extrude. You can use the quick extrude method. I'm going to go to level one first. And I'm going to press uh, W. And I'm going to go this time to the side view. Okay, side view, which is hold down the space bar, left mouse click on Maya, right view. Oh, sorry, uh, front view. So we can move this, oops, press W and then move. Okay, I'm still in sliding mode. Let me turn this off. We can move this uh, group of faces upwards, right, like that. Then you can also use rotation to rotate it upwards like this. Right now, the spout thickness is too big, so I'm going to press R to scale and uniformly scale it down slightly like that. So right now, I have a section looking like this. So I'm going to extrude one more portion so I can remain at my front view okay, and then press W. While the faces are still selected, holding down the shift, I'm going to extrude another section. Okay, and then I'm going to press uh, R, scale, scale it down. 
then I can press E to rotate it until the spout is flat like that. So depending on your design, you want to bring the spout all the way up, or I think I want to bring it uh, right to the level where the handle starts. <laughs> okay, so at this stage, right, you can still change the design of your spout if you want. For example, this group of edge loops, I can double click on it. And remember just now I showed you the, uh, the edge slide. You can hold down the shift, right mouse click, and slide edge two. You can middle mouse click and slide the edge higher or lower. So this is to select the edge loop and then slide it. I'm going to slide this edge loop up. And then while it's still being selected, I can rotate it. Okay. So now I can press number three to see the result. Now, of course, we want to create uh, or give an illusion that there is a, a hollow spout here. So I'm going to press number one, select the faces here. Okay, and then I'm going to extrude, shift right mouse click, extrude the face, and I'm going to use offset to offset inwards like that. So I can create a thickness like so. All right, while the faces are still being selected, I'm going to press W to go to move. So now the inner four faces are selected, I'm going to change my front view. And I'm going to turn on four wireframe view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down to shift, left mouse click to extrude. And then I'm going to rotate to this section here. Then press W again, holding down the shift to do a quick extrude. Then I can press E. Then I can rotate this section here again. I'm going to scale this up slightly. Now I'm extruding inwards. Huh? Then holding down the shift and extrude one final section inwards here. And we don't need the last group of selected faces anymore. We can just delete it away. Okay, so you can see the faces that I've selected, I've extruded all the way inward. I don't need them anymore. I can just delete it away. So I've created the spout, but if I go to shaded view and I subdivide it, the spout still needs some work. Right now, the spout is a bit too sharp looking. So we're going to use the bevel to help us. We're going to select these uh, ring of faces. So if you remember, you can select one face. Press Q to select. Holding down the shift, double click. This ring of faces is now selected. Then we can bevel it. We can use the bevel tool here or shift right mouse click, bevel the face, and then we're just going to give it, okay, this fraction I think is enough. Um, I think I don't want to give it additional uh, segments. I think this is good enough because if I press number three, you can see now the uh, spout looks very defined. Okay, and I think uh, the basis for my teapot is done, it's good. Okay, now we want to extend the base so that it looks more like a teapot. So that's why we're going to use the soft selection tool. Okay, the soft selection tool. So for the soft selection tool, right, you can start off by selecting a group of uh, faces that you want to influence first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this ring of face loop. So how I select it, I select one face, shift, move to the adjacent face and double click. All right, then I'm going to press B, okay, B to turn on soft selection. So with the faces selected and you press B, you can see that there is this color that uh, starts from yellow and then it gradually fades out to red. Okay, so yellow is the area with the heaviest influence. Now you can go over to soft selection on your tool kit as well. If you click on the drop down, you can control the size of the influence, or you can hold down to the B key, hold down to your B key and middle mouse click. Okay. Okay, right now it's not working. Let me undo that. Okay, holding down to your B key and middle mouse click to adjust the range. Now, for some reason, it is not working for me. Let me try that again. Yeah, okay, now it's working. So you need to hold on to B and middle mouse click and drag to the right to adjust the range. So 
So I'm adjusting the range so it's influencing the lower half of the teapot. So that when I press scale, and I'm going to use uniform scale, I can increase the base of my teapot like that. And the reverse is true as well. I'm going to select the top ring faces here. You see, I select one face, then shift select. Then I can reduce the size of the top like that. Okay. So now, if I press number three, I got a very nice looking teapot. Okay, if you need to adjust the, uh, the handle. Okay, remember to turn off your soft selection. If you see the color looking like this, you know that your soft selection is on. So you just need to press B one more time. Okay, now let me refine the handle. Okay, just make it a little bit nicer, a bit rounder, a bit. And now we are lacking something. We need to cover up the teapot. Okay, and maybe this section here is a bit too thick. I will just reduce the size uniformly. Okay, and then this part here is collapsed in a bit. I will use my arrow key to push it out a little bit, or rather to transform, to move it out a bit. Okay, do some little tweaks, right, to fix up your teapot. And finally, we are left with the cover. So how, how, how are we going to model a cover, right, to uh, cover this teapot? I'm going to go to level one, and I'm going to borrow this ring of faces here. Okay, remember, we can select this ring of faces, right, and we can detach it, and then from this ring of faces, right, I can model out a cover. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So you can, you can actually extrude and create a cover out this way, or you can detach it and then uh, tweak the model. So I'm going to show you the first, first method, which is I'm just going to extrude this. So shift, right mouse click, extrude. Then uh, you can pull along the blue arrow here to pull it up. Okay, and then switch over to the global axis, right? And then you try to scale it non-uniformly like this. So you're going to create a simple looking teapot like that. Okay, and then we're going to insert one edge loop right across here. Maybe in the middle. We'll start with the middle first. And then double click to select this edge loop and scale it out gently. And then I'm going to repeat my edge loop insertion. Middle mouse click, middle mouse click. Press Q to select. Then scale it out ever so gently because you want to create that cover or the curvature look. All right. Now remember, we are extruding this out. Uh, from the original, so we will still have to find a way, right, to gradually uh, cover this up and then cap it. So what I'm going to do right now, you can see that there's an internal section here. I'm going to get rid of it, right, by just deleting it away, so that there's a thin mesh above here. So this will help me to create the handle. So I'm going to double click to select this edge. Okay, remember, you have to delete that internal faces again. Let me just undo to show you one more time. So remember, when I extruded, right, there's a thickness inside this uh, cover. But I want to get rid of the faces inside here. Okay, select one face, shift select, and then you press number four. You can see that there's an internal face here. I don't really need this because, first of all, nobody's going to see this. I can delete it away. And to be honest, right, a lot of the internal faces, right, you can also go in and delete it away because no one is going to see them. But anyway, uh, I'm getting besides myself. The thing is, you can go and delete those faces to optimize your model because uh, at this stage, right, uh, let me see where I can double click the slide. Yeah, I can double click and select it because it is a separate element from the rest of the teapot. And I don't really need it. I can just delete it away. And right now, my teapot is a very thin shell of polygons, okay, which I can now safely select the edge, then extrude the edge. I'm going to use uh, the green arrow to extrude the edge inwards. Okay, and then I'm going to extrude again by pressing G, repeat last command, one section like that. Okay, and then press G again to extrude outwards. This time, I'm going to pull the blue arrow. Okay, 
Now I'm going to create the handle. Okay, and then I'm going to press G again to extrude the edge. Okay. And then, let's see. Okay, the, the distance between here and here is not that big, but we can fix that later. Then I'm going to extrude the edge one more time. Press G. Just close it in. And then, press G again. Extrude another piece. And we can merge all of these together to merge all these selected edges together. So if I go over to uh, vertex mode, or actually let's go to edge mode. With the edge mode selected, uh, I should be able to merge or collapse them together. Can I do that? Let me see. Or I have to convert them to, I think I have to convert them, collect, convert them to <coughs> vertices first. Okay, with the edges, right, with the edges of this still selected, I need to convert it into vertices before I can merge. So shift right mouse click, sorry, control right mouse click to vertices, to vertices perimeter. Okay, I ended up selecting the outer perimeter, which is not what I want. So let me undo that. Go to edge, uh, control right mouse click to vertices, to vertices. Yeah, so this is what I want. So with the vertices selected, I can collapse them together by holding down the shift, right mouse click, merge vertices, merge to center. Okay, the center is in a weird location. Oh, okay, I think I know what's wrong. I accidentally selected. These vertices are still selected. That's why every vertices are merged together. Okay, my miss, I will have to deselect everything. And let's try again. Let's see whether I can select the vertices. Yeah. There's another way you can select the vertices. I cannot zoom in any more closer. Another way you can select a ring of uh, vertices, which is you select one vertex, holding down to shift, and double click. And if it's on a loop or an edge loop, the vertices will be selected. OK, and then now I can merge them. So shift, right mouse click, merge vertices, merge to center. All right. So now I've got my handle, but my handle position is a bit off. So let me go to the front view and let's fix that. I want the handle to be higher. So because I created a gap earlier on when I extruded the edge, I can drag and select these vertices, then I can pull it up. Now I got a higher handle. Now of course, I want it to subdivide to look nicer, right? If I press 3 to subdivide, actually this works. If I don't do anything, I think this one works. My teapot is done already. Yeah, but if I want the uh, the edges to be more defined, right? I will go over to uh, level one. I'll select all the hard corners, which is here. Double click, shift, double click, shift, double click, shift, double click. Maybe this one as well. Okay, all the hard edges here, and then give it a bevel. So shift right mouse click, bevel the edges, and then reduce the fraction. And I think this is good enough. Okay, everywhere got nice bevel. And then we can press number three, and my handle now looks much better. Okay, so and if for some reason you want to, to animate somebody removing the teapot cover, then you have to, let's go to the front view. I'm gonna select the top faces first. Okay, remember increase selection, reduce selection. We're gonna go through that again. Shift full stop to increase selection. Shift full stop to increase selection, you see? I keep on pressing until I reach to the edge. Now I can detach this uh, section here. So if I click on shift right mouse click, I can say detach or best, I can say extract faces. If I do extract faces, remember what I mentioned earlier on, I've successfully made this into a separate object. So now my teapot is removable. Okay, then th I can name this as, uh, if you go over to the outliner, I can call this the T pot cover. And then the bottom one, I call this the T pot. Okay, right now you can see that because they used to be long to the same object, right? That's why in the outliner, you see them being uh, grouped together in this node. So we want to delete away the history and freeze the transformation so that we can get rid of all this information. So select the teapot, go over to your channel box. You can see did so many 
operations to our teapot. We need to delete away the history. Okay, and then freeze the transformation. Same for the cover. Delete away the history and freeze transformation. And now you can see the one of the transform nodes has disappeared. Okay, we have to now take these two and unparent it from this transform node by selecting them from the hierarchy and middle mouse click, middle mouse click and drag them out from this hierarchy. Then this node, this group node, we can delete away. So now they are independent mesh objects. So we want to create a hierarchy. We want the cover to follow where the teapot is going. So we select the child, which is the teapot cover, then shift select the parent, and then you can press P. Okay, or you can select the teapot cover, middle mouse click and drag over the teapot, and now we form a teapot parent child hierarchy. So we select the teapot, and now the child will follow. And this one is our mug, let's name it accordingly. Call this the mug. So if I press number three, all of the object should look nice. Turning on the wireframe. Okay, so now uh, basically your teapot is complete. And if you still want to, you can continue to tweak it. You can make it uh, more unique. Let's say, for example, with this loop, right, I want to make it bigger. And this loop, I'm going to make it smaller. Oops. Make sure you scale uniformly so you can change the design of your teapot. Okay, I shall stop the video recording now and uh, you guys can review it later.